My name is Adanich. I'm from uh, Voice of America. In fact, Ethiopia is saying that uh, it doesn't believe Eritrea accepts the uh, peace plan. Uh, Mr. Abbas Haye gave uh, a speech to Ethiopian community last week, and he said that uh, if Eritrea says it accepts it, it's because uh, it's weakened, or maybe it's trying uh, to get time. And he said the f uh, Ethiopia's first option would be to continue with the preparation for war, and uh, only if Eritrea um, accepts everything Ethiopia says, then the peace plan, uh, Ethiopia could take it as a second option. And he said that, um, to use his words, Ethiopia must break Eritrea's spinal cord. And uh, what's your response to that? I don't know, I would be laughing and probably uh, amusing myself about these uh, statements that have come from uh, Minister or Mr. Uh, Abai Zahai. Ethiopia does not believe. This is a perception on the part of Ethiopia. We have officially, through a written letter by me to uh, the current chairman of the OAU and everybody else, accepted all the documents. Why can't the government of Ethiopia believe that Eritrea has accepted the uh, documents put forward by everybody else? Why does he want to believe that Eritrea has not accepted these documents? What exactly, what guarantees does he want to believe ultimately that Eritrea has accepted this document? As to the uh, statements coming up, I, I don't take them uh, seriously. The problem is uh, this government uh, banked on Eritrea's refusal or rejection of any arrangement for a peaceful solution. And this was again a perception. They wanted Eritrea to reject, to have a justification for continuing the war, misleading the Ethiopian people and particularly the people in Tigray. They want a justification for continuation of war. Why? This is a domestic political problem for the government. The government wants a justification for its survival. It wants to continue to survive by telling people that there is an external threat, there is a conflict with Eritrea. We are not in the business of giving this government an excuse to mislead its people and continue to war. Now, whether Eritrea is weak or not is not the business of the government there. Why should they bother about our weakness or strength? It doesn't have any bearing on the substance of the matter that is put forward as a solution to the conflict we have, and that is a border conflict. Whether we are weak or strong doesn't matter. I think the events of the last 15 months have been uh, very uh, crystal clear, and I don't think there is anyone having the illusion to believe that uh, Eritrea is weak at this point in time, and that's one of the reasons why it has accepted the uh, modalities and the uh, technical arrangement. I wouldn't be interested in talking about our capability to defend our sovereign uh, country and our military capability in a number of issues. It doesn't make any sense at all. Talking about military capabilities and uh, bragging about what one can do and what one cannot do does not make any sense at all. It's a senseless logic of people who have their own perceptions about this conflict. I won't challenge uh, Abai Sahai about what I could do on the ground militarily or what he could do on the ground. What does it mean after all? Does it make any sense? We're talking about a solution to a conflict a border conflict. And we'll have to deal with that without regards to whether the other party is militarily weak or strong, whether the other party has got planes, tanks, artillery on the ground. It doesn't make any sense to me, and I think any observer who's followed developments the last 15 months clearly knows the situation on the ground. I wouldn't uh, uh, bargain on the assumption that I am strong or weak militarily. I would like to uh, find a way and judge the proposals coming from anywhere on their merits, not on my capability to defend or on my military uh, resources. And again, the call for uh, military preparation 
on the part of the TPLF regime in Ethiopia is an illusion. Shetabilu, Abu Midan.